Dear viewer, welcome again to the four days of prayer season. This is a special season for the Adventist Church globally. We, of course, we, as you remember, we began the 10 days of prayer in the month of January. Now we are going through 40 days of prayer. We started yesterday, 3rd of May. And today, 4th of May, we are experiencing yet another moment with the Lord. And the thought for this moment of prayer is humility seeking and turning. Humility seeking and turning. And we shall be uh, talking to ask God to uh, give us, you know, the gift of uh, humility and seeking to be with the Lord and turning away from our weekend ways of life that we may, you know, re receive the revival that comes from the Lord. Now, the text that is guiding us uh, this day is the book of uh, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 7 and verse number 14. Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 7, verse number 14. This is a powerful text, a memory verse for so many of the Advent members and those who seek the Lord in prayer. But I want to read one more time in your hearing from the book of Second Chronicles, chapter uh, 7, verse number 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. I read one more time. A Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble. And this where we pick the first word. Remember that the, the, the to topic for this day is humility, seeking, and turning. And so where do we get this from? So the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall, number one, humble themselves and pray. And number two, and seek. So we are seeking Seek my face, and we are here to seek the face of God. And number three, and turn from their wicked ways. When you seek the face of the Lord, you will love them. That face of God, the glory that comes from the, the, the face of God, the presence of God, we automatically cause you to turn away from your sin and seek him and, and experience a renewal in your life. Now, this is where we are today. I want to thank you and to invite you. Let's pray as we begin. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege of the 40 days of prayer. Day two, humility, seeking, and turning. Now speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see, pride is the reason why sin came. The text of the Bible is very clear. It is when the angel Lucifer was filled with pride that he sought to exalt himself above even God himself. Of course, we know the phrase, pride comes before fall. And it's true. Even spiritual fall, it is preceded by pride. We have received salvation through Christ Jesus. We have been invited into his church. We are members of his family. We, are the, we, are share, we share the privileges and of, of, the, of, of the family and the kingdom of God. We, we have anything and everything we needed at our disposal through Christ Jesus. We have seen God blessing us and using us in various occasions and uh, times in our lives. Even making us the instrument of leading other people unto salvation. People have depended upon us for guidance and leading. And because of this, at times, there is a sense of uh, self-fulfillment and, and, and pride sets in and you start exalting yourself and feeling better than other people. Self-importance that blinds our, our, our focus and our sight on him who is on the cross. 
Now, when this pride comes in us, it starts bringing us down from the tree of Calvary, where humility is. It brings us down, where we start forgetting who God is and what he has done for us, and we start focusing on ourselves. Now, the prayer then invites us to be reminded that it is not because of the gifts we have that we serve the Lord. It is because of grace that we have in Christ Jesus that we serve God. And so this moment of prayer, in these 40 days of prayer, day two is reminding us that we need to be humble before the Lord. You see, pride, if it's not checked, it graduates to, be, to, to, to arrogance. And we are having many Christians today who are arrogant. It's spiritual arrogance. Spiritual arrogance is dangerous for a heart. It's dangerous for a Christian. And until we know how to remove spiritual arrogance, we will continue serving in church, singing in church, preaching in church, doing many things for the Lord, yet our hearts are dressed with spiritual arrogance. And I also suggest to us here today, there's no way of removing spiritual arrogance and spiritual pride than prayer. It is when you are at the feet of Jesus and at the moment of prayer that you are reminded of how sinful and unworthy you are. It's when you discover the awesomeness of the glory of God. When you see his face, when you experience his presence, then you discover like Isaiah, you're a man of dead leaves. You are unworthy to be before him. Not even a single thing you do that can make God smile to you. It's only by his grace. And so the moment of prayer, brethren, is a time when we are reminded of who we are in the world of sin without Christ and also reminded of our identity in Christ Jesus. And so then, the text is here, if we shall humble ourselves. It is my prayer that today, this second day, that we may seek to humble ourselves. And number two, the Bible here says, and seek his face. That we may see him, you see, by beholding we become transformed. What you spend time beholding, that is what you become. And the question this day, I'm asking you, what are you taking and spending your time looking at. Where is your eyes facing or looking at? It's my prayer that we may all lift our eyes and see him on the cross as he's being nailed there and crying in agony and in pain just for our sin. That we can say, why should we continue keeping this sin when he is dying on the cross for these particular sins? And we can, we can just throw them to him and because he knows how to deal with sin. Now seek his face. And then turn away from our evil and wicked ways that we shall be revived and reformed. And so this day, I'm just talking to your heart and to your life individually, personally. How is your life like? You see, you can deceive God. Uh, you could be watching this video right from your house or in your car, wherever you are. You, you can deceive yourself. You can deceive God. You know what you have done. You know how your life looks like. And God exactly knows even more than you are. But I want to let you know, you can't hide sin and prosper spiritually. But you see, God is so gracious. He says, bring them to me. Bring them to me. Bring them to me. Bring your sins to me. And God is inviting in the second day of prayer that you may bring your sins to him. And he knows how to cleanse, purify, and qualify you to be a saint. Turn away from our wicked ways that he shall heal us. And so as we pray, is there any sin? Is there any way in your life that is not in harmony with the will of God? Is there a practice or a habit or a behavior in your life that is in contradiction to the will of God? It's this our prayer. Remember, it is at the feet of Jesus where that wicked woman, the prostitute Magdalene, found grace, found forgiveness, and found hope. 
It is at this moment in this 40 days of prayer that you are supposed to find grace of God, supposed to find mercy from God, and supposed to, be, to find hope through revival from the heart of God. So I invite you as I pray together with you that you may look deep in your heart and desire to remove that sin like Paul who say in Hebrews chapter 12 that so easily ensnares you that your path we will be clear and you shall be in harmony with God. Let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege of prayer one more time. This is our second day, the 4th of May, in the experience of 40 days of prayer when we are talking about humility, seeking, and turning. Pride is the reason why many people are falling. We have spent more time focusing on things that are not spiritual. But you'd rather have us focus on Christ and looking upon him that many of these things here on earth may grow strange redeemed. And so it is by beholding you that we get transformed and this experience of four days of prayer is a moment with you that we may have a privilege to behold you, to see you as you are, to hear from you, to learn from you, and to get transformed by your glory. Lord, we are seeking to turn away from our world of sin. And this moment I want to pray for my viewer that whatever challenge of sin there could be in, your grace is sufficient, my Father, I'm praying for forgiveness and cleansing that you shall forgive us all. And accept us before you and answer our prayers. There are many things we can pray for this day, Lord. We have a list of seven people you are praying for. Lord, may you visit with those people and answer their concerns and meet them at their very point of needs. We are praying for our own revival and reformation. Lord, please, may you give us the power of the Holy Spirit. We are praying for the revival of our church. That, Lord, truly you shall outpour your Holy Spirit upon us that we shall be a people who are guided by the power from above. I want to thank you for this privilege. And Lord, as we journey through, that we shall have experience and also testimonies of what you have done. And that sister, that brother, whose heart is broken, whose heart is hopeless, Lord, may you restore their hope and peace in their life. Those who are seeking to find, Lord, may you answer them and open their doors because you have said, uh, seek you shall find and knock the doors shall be opened and even if we ask Lord we shall be given we know that you are able to do more than we ask of you and it is in Jesus name we pray that you shall grant us our request according to the riches in glory in Jesus name we pray amen amen God bless you dear viewer please remember this is the 40 days of prayer season Thank you for being part of this the second day. I invite you even tomorrow and also as I request you to invite as many as you can by sharing this video. Encourage many people. Look for just get a list of seven people that we shall be praying for in the next about seven days or ten days. And as we went up with those, then pick another list of seven or even more as you can. That this would just be about you, but about so many people within your contact. Pray for me as I pray for you. Let's pray for one another. May the Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. God be with you.